All right. I've had this idea in my head for a little while of uh, one of those um, shade enclave mountains that they've split the top of, and they had used to have uh, floating upside down for their uh, communities and for their giant, massive cities. So uh, I think maybe uh, we'll do something like that, and it's going to be like it looks like the top of a mountain just kind of split in two, hanging upside down, and then what we'll do is. Uh, I'm thinking maybe some ruins on top and some maybe a walkway or something like that. Something cool. Um, I think we'll just take our time with this and see how it all kind of turns out. My main idea is the upside down floating island. And then anything else I think will just be, uh, will be a bonus that you add on on your own if you like more stuff. Um, I'm also thinking maybe we'll put a couple of... Uh, hanging um, chunks of uh, the rest of the mountain that maybe have broken away that are floating around the outside of this and what we'll do is uh, um, connect those with some uh, clear plastic or uh, forks or something from the dollar store. Alright, let's do the floating mountain. First get yourself some XPS foam, obviously. I've got this really big thick blue stuff, it's like four inches thick. Um, if you don't have something like that, that's okay too. You can use the inch or half inch, whatever. You're just going to have to layer it out a little bit. But uh, I draw a basic idea of kind of how big I want it. And then uh, let's cut it out. Grab a couple more chunks. Sorry about the little blip there. I'm thinking we'll have a couple of raised spots for some uh, elevated terrain as well. So I'm just going to glue those chunks on there randomly right now. We'll uh, use our kitchen knife to carve that out anyways and make it all look like it's one big piece. I'm going to do one on both sides. Here's my basic idea. Thinking it's kind of not too bad here. And then we're just going to start sculpting and carving this uh, foam so that it looks really cool and it looks like jagged rock and uh, start blending in some of these uh, cuts that we have um, kind of showing right now. It's going to take a while. Make sure you guys uh, take your time. I don't want to see you guys cutting yourselves and uh, I don't want to get blamed for anybody losing fingers on this. Just take your time, start carving out some random pieces, jagged, nice and, uh, nice and crisp. Don't worry about how it looks right now with that 90 degree, we're gonna fix that. So this is sort of what we got so far. I got like, it looks like a, maybe a little bit of a walkway underneath the one ledge. And then I'm thinking maybe over here, I'm gonna put some stairs right out of the rock. So I roughly carve out some stairs with my pencil. And then I'm gonna go in with my knife and I'm gonna carve in about as far and as wide as I wanna see these. Just kinda of prepping that. And then I'm gonna cut down the side on the top, starting from the top, sorry, uh, just so I can punch out that big chunk and rip it right out of there. So I got a basic idea of stairs. And then I'm gonna go back in with my knife and I'm gonna clean them up all real nice. All right, continuing on with my carving and my, uh, my forming of this uh, rock chunk. Grab some bark if you've got any available and a big kitchen knife. And I'm just gonna chop up a bunch of random chunks of this. I really like using bark. I mean, it's amazing how much bark looks like stone when you put a little bit of gray paint on it. And I apologize also for the many switches. Um, while doing this video, I was having some serious issues with my camera. So um, I'm trying to rectify that now and you'll see later on in the actual video that I switch from one camera to another. So for all these little 90s, this is what I did is I just grabbed some of my random uh, cut off chunks and I just start gluing them up there, trying to figure out which one's gonna fit where. And then yeah, just start gluing those chunks in there just to cover up some of those crazy looking 90 degrees that you don't normally see in nature like that. And don't worry how big these uh, chunks are that you're putting there right now. Just get them in there. Get them in there, get them filled, 
and then what you can do is later on we're going to carve this out anyways and make it blend with the rest of its uh, surroundings anyways. For the bark I just like kind of randomly putting it in there and what I'll do is I don't just glue it on the front face I'll carve into the actual styrofoam so that I can set the uh, bark a little bit into the styrofoam so it looks like it's more part of one piece and then it'll give it a really cool jagged looking um, uh, cliff face and, and so on. Of course we're going to hot glue everything in here, I'm the hot glue master, I don't care. I just can't stand waiting forever for the other glues to, uh, to set. All right, so underneath I got that little walkway. I made it look like uh, old brick and cobblestone on the bottom, just because I was thinking maybe this was part of a, the ruins were part of a castle before the, before the uh, mountain was torn off and some of the remnants of the old uh, hallways in the basement are still kind of showing. It'll be kind of neat for your rogue to try and scale that anyways later on. And here's what it looks like with some more bark on it, really spreading it out there. You can be as random as you want with it, so it doesn't have to be any kind of pattern. I think it's coming along nice. Oh, and you can see that I put grid lines on there. You're going to want to do that before uh, you glue, glue the three pieces together at the beginning. It becomes a real pain in the ass to get your ruler in there otherwise. And if you work with grid, you're going to want to do it in advance. Now we're just going to hit it up with my aluminum uh, foil ball, the magic rock maker. Get in all the crevices and everything you can. We got some bricks from another uh, build that I was doing back in the day. I'm thinking those would be perfect for the ruins on here. So I'm just going to randomly glue and make some uh, broken walls and some um, broken corner walls and some features like that. The best part about this is it doesn't have to be perfect. You're just creating kind of like what what might be a remnants of uh, of a castle or a, a watchtower. That clear thing you see up on the right hand side there, that's uh, <clears throat> kind of a, a sigil piece that I have from another set that I made a mold of and just uh, it just happened to fit perfectly. Obviously it's not one by one squares, so I'm gonna use that up there if you don't have that. It doesn't matter. You could carve in something cool with your pen and make sure that you uh, highlight it later and make it really stand out. All right, so we got some walls built there. It's starting to look like something. Now we're going to create a little walkway right across the front of that or the back side of that wall. I guess if you're looking at it like this. I always start off by, especially the parts that are going to be buried, um, I grab my dentist tool and I scratch in uh, the wood grain that I want. You could use a, probably use a pen or a ice chipper or exacto blade, whatever you need. I just really like the exaggerated look. So we're gonna use this underneath as the uh, walkway's uh, uh, form or holding. Trim it to size. We'll just hot glue that in right in place there. All right, so what I did is I made a second one of those and then what I did is I just cut some pieces of wood for planks to go across. And I've made it look kind of rickety, so what I've also decided is I thought maybe it'd make it a little bit harder terrain. I cut out a little piece of it so it looks like it's broken or old and weathered. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back in here and I'm gonna scribe in that wood grade that I really like. I know it looks cartoony, man, but I think it's the coolest stuff. Remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. This is your thing, man. All right, so this is kind of what we're looking at now. I put some bricks on the inside. 
where the doorway, where the old doorway might have been, just to look like it has some sort of uh, extras to it. And then any of these open spots that you've got between the uh, bark and the actual styrofoam, I'm just gonna grab some random chunks, man, and jam them in there and make them look like rocks jutting out of those areas so that it'll cover up all those holes. Just like that. And I added a little bit more bricks on the back there. All right, I got these cool Monster High dolls from the Valley Village in town here. So I'm gonna pull the heads off here and what we're gonna do is we're gonna sink them into the walls on either side facing each other. So you just, you know, really for no other reason other than it looks cool and uh, it gives a little bit more added feature to the situation. And maybe that could be in part of your plot story or in some of your campaign and maybe add some sort of crazy uh, wizard that like to create faces out of the stone walls or whatnot. It's gonna be cool, man. It's gonna look cool no matter what. And don't worry about not having hair. What I would just do and unfortunately in this video I don't show you, but maybe in another video I will, is you can use hot glue to create hair. Just do it in layers, nice and slow, because you gotta let the glue dry before you continue on, but just do it nice and slow. Yeah, it looks like it's gonna fit there just nice. Now I could have cut these in half, I didn't wanna play around with it, I just glued the whole head in there, planning on filling the background with uh, extra pieces of stone and whatnot and some more hot glue for hair. So unfortunately, I uh, had some massive problems with my video, but uh, here we are. Um, I finished off what we had. I have added a few more things. Um, if you guys want to see me make those in another video, maybe you guys can let me know in the comments. Um, I just added a couple of those uh, floating rocks off to the side, and I put a little walkway in between them. And what I ended up using was some plastic forks, uh, clear plastic forks from the dollar store, just to have them uh, some sort of support, but then the clear plastic looks like they're just kind of hovering on their own. And we've moved on here now after I did a quick black uh, Mod Podge, and then I took it outside after it dried and I gave it a black spray bomb. As we've moved on to the gray here, and we're just piling out the gray all over everything 60 to 90% coverage, get it all over the place. And then I'm going to go back in here with my uh, umber brown and a mixture of uh, spun gold and some white. And we're gonna just randomly put in some brown marks, man, and just just do randomly. You know, obviously the wood's gonna be brown. Anything wood's brown, obviously, but um, just, uh, you know, stones aren't just gray. They're brown and they're black and they're beige and they're tan. So just randomly get some brown in there, man. Just work it in there all over the place. Now I switch over to a little bit of a highlight, so I flip to a cinnamon brown with a white and a little bit of spun gold. And I grab one of those, uh, uh, makeup brushes from the dollar store. We're just going to do some quick little brown highlights, something that will bring out that brown and add a few little brown highlights to out here and there, whatever looks really cool. Obviously, obviously always uh, coming down from the top if you can, but I mean, it doesn't always work that way. So just catching some of those highlights with this light brown is really going to make it pop. And we're back to a gray again but I'm gonna go super light on the gray. It's gonna be a really, really light gray. And we'll go back in there and do some more highlights with another separate um, makeup brush. I always use a new one for each highlight color I'm doing just so that I can keep with the same dry brush uh, theme. And we're just gonna go in there and randomly hit them up. Got a little tree that I had here um, stashed away, so I thought that would be kind of cool sticking out of the one side. I'm just gonna grab my dentist tool there and just like drill it in there. It doesn't have to be perfect, man. Trees come up through rocks, so for it to look jagged at the bottom kind of makes sense. And we're just going to hot glue that bad boy right in there. Now, we're going to do the white highlight. I got this really cool, my wife bought me this uh, really cool fan makeup brush, so I'm going to give it a try here. Looks a little bit big, but it might work for something this huge. You get lots of white on there, dry it off, and then just start hitting up those highlights. And don't worry about it looking super, super light. I've said this before, once you hit this up with some brown and some black washes, that light's gonna be so muted, it's not gonna be funny. With the whites, I do generally try to come from the top down, almost always, if I can, just to really give that uh, light effect a highlight. But make sure you hit up everything you can that looks like it should have light on it. All right, we got a little bit of glue here, just straight glue. I like to go with the straight glue when I do my flocking. 
and I've got an old spice jar there that uh, I'll be pulling out in a second there and it's got my flock in it and it's homemade flock so it's basically sawdust with a bunch of different colors of green and then I've also gone to the dollar store and I added some oregano and some parsley um, they're super dirt cheap at the dollar store and man they really do blend in with like a, a leaf and foliage kind of undergrowth I think it looks really cool and uh, in the end your thing looks like uh, and smells like uh, like pizza especially with oregano and then after you're done you see me with a little spray bottle there that's really really watered down PVA that afterwards I, I hit up the top so that it soaks right through and we've done all the sides we've done underneath we've added green everywhere now wherever you think you want to see it I'm not going to tell you where you need your float uh, your flock but I also have some of these grass tusks and I've got some of these uh, different uh, mosses and stuff some from Michael's some from um, other stores and some from out in my backyard and I'm just going to randomly especially this is the time now where you're going to want to use this stuff to uh, fill in any of the little holes or little gaps you think that you kind of wish you had done something else with but now's the time man grab this mold grab the grab the flock grab the grass We've got a little bit of this vine stuff too from uh, um, one of the dollar stores and I started cutting little pieces and finding crevices and then just gluing it in there and then just gluing it along every so often like vines all the way around and I know you don't see it really well now but you'll see it later on in the pictures all right this thing's really starting to come along now got some grass tufts randomly in there got some vines hanging out we got a tree I think this thing looks pretty cool now we're gonna move on to the washers. I got a brown wash and a Newland oil. That's a homemade Newland oil. I use so much of it, I have to make it myself because uh, otherwise I go broke buying it. We'll start off with the brown. I had less in the bottle than I thought I did. So here we go, I got a little paintbrush here and I'm gonna start brushing on that brown wash on anything brown. And then you can also hit up any of the brown parts on the stone that you've got. And man, it doesn't even have to be on the brown parts. It could be on the gray parts too, and it's gonna add uh, a little bit of flavor and a little bit of texture and a little bit of uh, uh, color variance as you're looking over this uh, solid piece of stone. And if you were me, I would be liberal with all of this uh, wash stuff. Here, we're gonna switch over to my homemade Nula. And that shit's just going everywhere. I'm not gonna discriminate. It's everything's getting covered, I don't care. It's amazing how awesome this stuff makes your terrain look in the end. Really makes those larks and darks and lights really, uh, the variations in between them, it really separates them out. All right. And then just brush that out, just slather it all over the place. Here we go. Yeah, finished result. Like I said again, I apologize for all the jumpiness. Uh, my video this week almost didn't happen. Uh, the week before, it didn't happen. I threw that one out uh, of another obelisk I was making just because I was having such trouble with my camera. But as you can see at the bottom there, the clear rungs coming up, all I did was take a couple of uh, champagne glasses from the dollar store, the clear ones, and just jam them up underneath and then just cover the bulb as part of the actual cup with a bunch of random pieces of bark and uh, pieces of uh, random foam and then just carved them in to make them look like stone and with those clear stems hanging out it looks like it's floating just make sure you glue it to something solid you might have to build it up with a bunch of chipboard I used a couple of uh, um, four by four resin uh, tiles that I had made and I just epoxied it right to the top of those to give it some sort of weight because this is obviously going to be top heavy Thought I'd throw down a little scene here for you guys, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Obviously, we're doing camera work by hand, so it's a little jumpy, and I do apologize. You can add anything here. I ran, I did add a, a couple of uh, uh, random other pieces of scattered terrain, like a, a kind of a creepy looking well and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, and there's the glue. You can see the hot glue made for hair. It, you know, if I could get a better um, close up, you'd see it look a little bit better, but. There it is, it, it looks decent, and I've got lots of moss wrapped in there and, and hiding any little holes that I missed. There's that little walkway, you got a road kind of shuttling down there, nice and easy. 
I carved out uh, just enough thickness from the base of that little walkway into the wall that you could probably wedge um, one of your little minis uh, bases in there and that's how that rogue is hanging out in there and I got a couple other uh, floating pieces of stone that I made from another project and uh, they're just kind of hovering and rotating around this thing and if you guys want to see me make those on another video just uh, let me know in the comments below and a few glamour shots to uh, round out the day I really hope you guys enjoy making this thing and uh, I really did I've been wanting to do it for a while and I really don't have any need for it in my campaign right now but uh, I don't know man it looks cool and I'm gonna find a place to put this in there just take your time and man it's gonna be what you want it to be this is your project and uh, no one's gonna tell you how to do it you just got to do what you feel like you want to do and have fun with it Well, thanks for coming, guys, and I uh, hope you like and subscribe, and we'll see you in another video. All right.